Hallelujah. The word of God tells us clearly, be thou not hearers of the word only, but be doers of the same. And we are greatly blessed and we are highly favored when we can hear a word from the Lord. And we should never reach the point where we take the word of God for granted or take the word of God carelessly. Because the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our path. That's Psalms 119, 105. Therefore, without his word, we will really not have any sense of direction. We would be in utter darkness. But thank God for the word of God, which is the lamp unto our feet, and it's a light unto our pathway. So we don't need to stumble, we don't need to grow up in the dark, because the word gives us light. Amen. And it tells us how to go, where to go, and once we hear the word, once we read the word, we should apply the word also. And we should obey the word. And when we obey the word, it will always guide us in the right direction where God wants us to go. Hallelujah. 
It is so critical and important for us to obey God's word. Isaiah said in Isaiah 1 verse 19, that if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and you rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. So to obey God's word is the key to success. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's the key to God's favor, to God's blessings and his prosperity. Yes. But if we disobey, the word of the Lord is very serious. It is very, very, it is so critical that it could cost us our lives if we disobey the word of the Lord. That's why God is speaking to us today. And he's telling us, don't let anything or anyone distract us from obeying his word. Amen? Amen. Many of us are deeply touched, deeply moved, and deeply convicted initially when we hear God's word. But in a matter of days, in a matter of hours, and sometimes in a matter of minutes or seconds, we allow the enemy, we allow people, we allow things to distract us, something else just come in and distract us from obeying the word of God. The word of God, sometimes we don't even allow it to uh, be digested properly and to germinate and bring forth food. That's why the psalmist David said to meditate upon the word day and night. If we don't take the word of God seriously and we allow everything we hear to just evaporate and just Spanish, then we back to square one. It's in the application of the word that we will see manifestation of what God says he will do. Jesus himself talks about the sower who went out and sowed the word and he sowed it. Some fall on stony ground, some fall on all sort of rocky and hard and shallow ground, but other fell on good ground. Come on, hallelujah. And those that fell on good ground, they sprang up and they brought forth fruit up to 100 fold hallelujah we want to be good soil so that when the word of the lord comes our way we will allow it to germinate we'll water it and it will go down deep and bring up spring up and bring forth good fruit amen, amen. hallelujah so we don't want anything to distract us from obeying god's word we find that second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. The first thing that um, Jehoshaphat said to the children of God when they were going out to battle, he said to them, Believe in the word of your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. God used a man of God by the name of Jehazel when they didn't know what to do. Jehoshaphat and the people of God said, Lord, we don't even know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because the battle they was up against was a strong army. Three armies were up against one. And they looked to the Lord in prayer. And God sent the answer to a man of God by the name of Jehazel. And he prophesied and said, Be still and know that God is God. Hallelujah. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to fight for you. Hallelujah. For the battle is the Lord's. Come on somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. And the man of God told them on the day they were going out to battle don't allow the word of the Lord that you heard from the man of God, the prophetic word to just slip by. Meditate on it. Believe in the word of the Lord, you shall be established. And believe in the word of the prophet, and so shall ye prosper. Hallelujah. And a great victory was wrought because they stood on the word of the Lord and did not allow anything to distract them from believing the promise of God. Amen? Amen. One of the things that the enemy will use to distract us from obeying the word of the Lord is worldliness. And also sinful pleasures. When we read Genesis chapter 19, if you turn to Genesis chapter 19, 
it tells us that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were vile. They were worldly and they were very immoral. And they were caught up in all sorts of sinful pleasures. And God sent his angels down to judge and to destroy that city. However, because of the prayers of and the intercession of Abraham, Abraham bargained with God and he said, God, if you even find down to ten, would you please save, the, save it for, for ten? But ten could not even be found. And we find that, we find that um, the man of God interceded and because of his intercession, Lot and his family, they, the Lord was willing to save them because of Abraham. And we find that in verse 12 it says, And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whosoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And we find that in verse 14 it says, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, sons which married his daughters, and said, Up! Get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Lot gave his sons-in-law the word of the Lord. And he received it from the angels that God sent down. But they took it carelessly. They were so distracted with all the worldliness, with all the sinful pleasures. Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah was bigger, was more, and, uh, the kind of things that was going on there. It was like New York City, or even worse. Business. Oh, I'm telling you, Sodom had a swing in those days. That was the city to dwell in. So Lot is coming to these boys, these guys, to tell them, you need to move out of Sodom. We are there, you are concerned. You must be out of your mind. We're not leaving this place here. This is where the action is. So they laugh him to scorn. To them, it seemed as if Lot was just mocking them. And as far as they were concerned, he was only making jokes. He was speaking false. He was only having fun with them because he couldn't be serious. As a matter of fact, everything that he said to them, they did not take it serious. It went to one ear and come out the other ear. And they did not budge. They talked about leaving. We're not moving from here, Lot. You must be mad. You can't matter something because they seem not seem to them as he was only mocking. They did not take the word of God seriously. They took it as a joke and it didn't mean anything to them. And God wants us as his people to be very careful and not take his word as a joke. Because once God ever speaks, he means what he says. And he will bring it to pass. Verse 15 tells us that when the morning arose, then the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while they lingered, let me tell you something, when you hear God is speaking, God is not speaking for you to just yourself and move when you want to move and how you want to move and all them kind of thing no 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 when god speaks he wants action come on hallelujah so god is speaking to lot and it's time to try to get his attention to tell lot you have to get out of sodom because this place is on the on the this one is on the hit list the angels they're not going back without the job accomplished this place must be destroyed they came down on a mission. 
because of the praise of Abraham, they're giving Lot and his family a chance to escape first. So we find that they lingered. And why they lingered? The men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto them, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay in all the plain. Escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. Verse 20 we find that Lot asked the angel for permission to go into a little city nearby. And verse 22 we find that they said to him, Haste thee, escape thee, for I cannot do anything till thou art thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Verse 23 tells us that when the sun was risen upon the earth, when Lot entered into Zoar, the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that uh, which grew upon the ground. Hallelujah. So we find here that the two sons of Lot. Who make sons in law. Who did not take his word seriously. That he got from the angel of God. And all the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. Perished. When God rained down brimstone and fire. Upon them and destroyed those cities. Worldliness. Sexual immorality, sinful pleasure seems to be, to be so prevalent in that city that it distracted every one of those in that, those that dwell in the city from obeying the word of the Lord. The evil and sinfulness of the people in those cities was so bad that God had no choice but to destroy them all. However, one of the saddest verse to read in this chapter is verse 26. Let us read it together. Let us read it again. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. You see something here? God was very merciful to Lot and his wife and his two daughters. And spared their lives. You see the angel held them by their hands. While they were lingering. And took them out. Of Sodom. And Gomorrah. But let me tell you something. As far as I could see. They took. Um, Lot's wife. Out of Sodom. And Gomorrah. But Sodom and Gomorrah was still inside of her. She was out physically. But mentally. She was still there. And so she could not see herself living anywhere else. Or carrying on living anywhere else. She was caught up with the pleasures, the buzz, the excitement. Everything that was going on in Sodom to such extent that when God sent warning and the angel of God even pulled them out and tell them escape for your life. And specifically the word said do not look back. Angel, make sure he told them, don't look back. But, wife of Lot did not take the word seriously. She was distracted. She was caught up with something else. So much that the words escape for thy life Look not behind thee, did not really get any chance to register in her spirit. The word came, and the word was a serious word. But something distracted Lot's wife from obeying what God was saying to them. And the word of the Lord tells us that she was traveling behind Lot. 
You see something? And you hear people don't mean to move. They just move lazy. They just heavy down themselves. And they just move like they don't have no zest and no zeal. This is judgment coming upon the land. And instead of she moving with the crowd and keeping up with her husband at least, they should be holding hands. She dragging behind her. She's not moving fast with them. You are escaping for your life, but I am thinking about what I left behind there in Sodom. And she was not moving with no zeal and no enthusiasm with them. She was thinking still about Sodom. Something distracted her back there. What God said, what the angel said, to look not back and make sure you escape for your life, it didn't mean anything to her. And she looked back into the city of Sodom. And immediately, she became a pillar of salt. What a sad story. Sometimes God is sending a word to us. So that we can escape our life. So that we can get away from the schemes and the traps and the attacks of the enemy. But if we allow the enemy to distract us with anything that's not of God. And we lose focus of God's word. Then we just open up ourselves for judgment. We find that maybe it was her friends that she left behind there she was thinking about. It could be her possessions. Maybe she had a very nice home. Maybe she was involved. In all of the sinful pleasures and the partying and the drinking and the giving. All the things that were going on there. Oh, discourse. Party. Everything was swinging in that town. Something got her attention back there. That even when the angels escape for your life and don't look back. Something. Something distracted her. She did not realize the seriousness of the word of the Lord. And she looked back. And immediately judgment struck her and she perished because of her disobedience to the word of the Lord. Sometimes God is speaking to us and sometimes he speaks to us directly. Sometimes he speaks to us to such that we can hear his voice like it's his audible voice speaking to us. Sometimes he used the Holy Spirit to just whisper in our ears. What he wants us to do. Sometimes God will use angels. Like how he used the angels to speak to Lot. Sometimes he would use his servants. His pastors. His ministers. His evangelists. It could be a brother. It could be a sister. Anyone God could use. God used a donkey one time to speak. And the donkey was speaking right. And it's only when the man opened up his eyes, he saw that the donkey was right. So sometimes God used all sorts of methods to speak to us. And we cannot afford to take his word carelessly. Because when we hear his voice, the word of the Lord tells us, harden not our hearts. Because if we allow anything to distract us from obeying God's word, it can lead to immediate destruction and judgment as Lot's wife experienced. You know something? God uses whosoever he will to speak. And we know when it's God because there is a conviction in our hearts. God always sends warning before judgment. Therefore, we must not allow anything or anyone to distract us from obeying God's word when he speaks to us because he takes his word seriously. Amen? If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 17 verse 32. And hear what he says there. Luke chapter 17 verse 32. Luke chapter 17, verse 32. When you have it, say amen. Okay, let us read it together. It says, remember Lot's wife. Jesus himself is talking here. 
Why would Jesus wants us to remember what happened to Lot's wife? Because Jesus realized that she made a serious mistake. There's some mistake you could make and you recover from them. There's a mistake you could make and the consequence is not death. There's some mistake you make and judgment don't hit you immediately like that. But this one was a serious one. And Jesus himself is telling us, remember that's why so that what happened to her don't have to happen to you. Remember what happened to her. So that you can live a different kind of life. God is speaking to us today to take his word seriously. Because he don't want us to face the same consequences that Lot's wife had to face. And these are the last days that we are living in. And the same spirit of destruction that caused Lot's wife and all in Sodom and Gomorrah to perish is very prevalent in the world today. The word of God tells us. If you read in verse 28 of that chapter, it says, As it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. I'm telling you something. You think Sodom and Gomorrah was easy? They had building projects. They had agriculture in Galore. They had all sorts of things going on for them. It was partying and drinking. They had it. Food to eat in abundance. Everything was in the town. That's why the son in law, sons in law, they didn't want to move. And Lot's wife himself, even though judgment was on his back, her back, she did not want to go. You see something? We can be so caught up with earthly things, sinful pleasures, and worldly possessions, that when God is speaking to us for our own soul and our own life's sake, we don't hear his voice. Sad to say. Sad to say. Sodom and Gomorrah. It was blooming. It was prospering financially. The agriculture and the building projects, they were all on fire. They were going places. Sad to say, just like in those days, we as human beings today, we are just the same. When we have good homes, when we have good cars, when we have good business going on, when we had good agriculture going on, when the building programs are going good and make people have money in their pocket, I'm telling you something. Many of them don't want to hear nothing from God no more. The last thing they want to hear from God is to do anything differently to what they're already doing because we are their concern. I'm living life. I have everything my heart could desire. Everything where this earthly thing where earthly pleasures and earthly fulfillment was concerned, Saddam had it going on. It was a blooming place. And they got caught up with the worldliness, the sinfulness, all the prosperity, the, the selling and the buying and everything that was going on. It was on a swing. And all they were concerned about was the life that they were living it up. Down in Sodom and Gomorrah. However God's word have not changed. The word of the Lord has not changed. And Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 tells us that righteousness exalted a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. No matter how long it takes. No matter how we look like they're swinging. No matter how we look like they're having a good time. Somewhere along the line. Sin must be punished. They were living all sorts of sexually moral life in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord was just giving them long rope. You know, sometimes when people get long rope, they think that they're going on well. They think, man, everything is going on good. They don't even want to hear. You mention God to them. 
They don't want to hear nothing about God. We're the concern. He does not exist. I have a fantastic home. I have money in my bank account. I have business that is bringing up. I did it myself from scratch. You don't see the great Babylon I have built. Don't you see how I'm prospering? These people forgot about God completely. But God one day showed up on the scene, stopped them in their tracks, and rained them fire and brimstone from heaven. And all of them were consumed. All the positions they were just wiped away just like that. God is telling us clearly that material things, you have to be careful with them. Because they distracted these people. Material possessions, earthly goods, and sinful pleasures that were in that, those cities, it completely blinded them spiritually to anything God was saying to them. The same day that Lot went out, as he said in verse 29, the same day, that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And you think that you're living it up. If you don't have God, you don't have nothing. If you do not have God in your life, all those pleasures and all those possessions that will just be wiped away just like that and leave you empty. They were rich physically, but spiritually they were poor. They had everything that life could offer on this earth, but they did not have God. They did not have salvation. Another sign of the end times is written in verse 26. And it says there, that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man, in those days, verse 27 tells us, they did eat and they drank and they married wives and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. We see clearly that the same thing was going on in the time of Noah. Noah prayed for 120 years telling them Stop what you all are doing. You all think that you're living life. Eating and drinking. Marrying and giving into marriage. And all sorts of things like this. And you think that is all there is to life. One day. One day it's going to rain. And when it rains. A flood is going to come upon the earth. And let me tell you something. 120 years of preaching is not simple preaching you know. They got the message boring in the ears, day in, day out. And they mock him. They laugh up to him. They say, what a stupid old man. Preaching from sins. I'm a toddler. I hear the same old message about rain going to come. I don't see one drop of rain up to now. I'm now old and feeble. And still out there preaching the same message. Something wrong with that man. Maybe he's gone local or something. He cannot be right in his brain. To be preaching the same thing from a child. I hear this preaching till now. And the message has not changed and nothing coming to pass. The same thing they're saying today. Concerning those of us who are saying that Christ will return. They're saying no man. No, no, no. I hear this from sins and no man say, Jesus coming what? Jesus coming what? The life that they were living down in Noah's time. It was so exceptional where they were concerned. Every preaching and every word from God that he was giving to the servant of God. No, it meant nothing to them. And so they carry on and they carry on. Many believe that they came and helped him to carry wood. And they came and they lift hammer and pound nail with Noah. And help him to build that big Ark. Mankind did not hear the preaching of the man of God. The word of the Lord did mean anything to them. They were distracted by the living it up 
and the partying and the sexual life, everything they were doing had them completely spiritually blind. But after you see that God used the man of God to preach for all those amount of years. After a while, the animals heard the voice of the Lord and obeyed the voice of Jesus, of the Lord. Two crapper come in the ark. Two cockroach came in. Ants, lizard, and iguana, and everything come inside the ark. Giraffe come in. Bears come in. Lions come in. Bird come in. Snake come in. Worm come in. Every kind of animal you can think about came in two by two. And mankind with all the five senses that we have, watch all of that. And don't watch. Just goes to show you when we are distracted with the things of this world, anything God is saying to us, it don't make no sense. Everything come into the ark. How they, some of them get in, I don't even know. They crawl in some kind of hole. They get in though. And two of every animal found themselves in the ark. And mankind heard all that preaching. They were too caught up. Too distracted with their lifestyle. And the enjoyment of sinful pleasures. Distracted them completely. And the word of the Lord tells us that when Noah went into the ark, when he went into the ark, finally, if Noah did shut that door, Noah might have opened it. But Noah did not shut the door. God shut the door. And if God shut the door, it's well shut. Nobody can open it. And after those years of preaching, God wants to tell somebody today that preaching will not be always there. When you hear his voice, harden at your heart. Because God will not always be talking, 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 talking. He wants actions. After the talking, for 120 years, God said, this is enough preaching now. It's time now for you to go and give yourself a little peace. Go in there with the animals. And you know something? God is such a God. It must have been God who spoke to those animals and bring them in. Because rat in there and the cat don't trouble them. <laughs> the lion and the lamb, everybody inside there and nobody not troubling nobody. It must have been God who brought them in there and they heard his voice. When you obey God's voice, God will protect you and preserve you. Come on somebody, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So we see animals heard his voice. Responded to his voice. And God preserved them right there in that ark. Not of fighting, not of vexation, nothing. Everybody at peace. And God preserved them right there in that ark. But after a while, raindrops began to fall. When raindrops began to fall, they thought he was a fool talking about this rain for 120 years. But all of a sudden, rain just began to fall. Never saw rain, but rain was falling now. And I'm sure they look at their hands and say, what's this? What is this? Where is this coming from? What is it? Well, maybe, maybe it's just a, 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 some kind of thing, a little drizzle. So they probably thought it would just come and go away. But it would not stop. Then you find that what begin to come up from ground level. Coming up to anchor, anchor deep. Then coming up to waist height. I sure they pound on that up door and they said, No, please, please, please. We heard your voice now. We now sober up to what you were telling us. We see the reality in it. Please open for us. Give us one more chance, please, Noah. Please. And I'm sure when no one had the bawling out there and the crying, my heart must have been touched. And if he could have opened it, he would have tried his best. But even if he tried the best he could, he could not open it. 
God shut the door. And the Bible tells us that when God shut the door, all the inhabitants of the land, they were all destroyed because they refused to hear the word of the Lord. Lord is telling us to let nothing, nobody, nobody at all distract you from hearing and obeying the words of the Lord because it is very important to apply what he says because our life depends on it. Our eternal destiny depends on it. We have to obey what God says. It's very important to remember, for us to remember that no matter how Blessed we are in this world. With early possessions, they're only temporary. They're only temporary. They don't last forever. And sometimes, when I think back on those of us who lived on the island of Montserrat, you have so much, and in a flash, hurricane took them away just like that. When we build back up ourselves now, and some who had one house got two houses. Some who had one bedroom house got five bedroom houses. Some who had six bedroom house had twelve bedroom house. I'm telling you, the place was blooming. Cars in Galo. Oh man, everything was on a swing. And all of a sudden, the Lord said natural disaster once again. And many of us. We left by the thousands and had to escape for our lives. Remember, just tell you a quick story. One night we were going out to preach and to have an open air meeting. And my dad went under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and preached in a shelter where people were. And he preached upon Lot. And how God sent down fire and destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And in preaching was escape for your life. And he was trying to tell people come out of sin because the Lord could send judgment anytime. Take the word of the Lord seriously. And I'm telling you something that very night in that island, on that island, we had some rock fall in Montreal that we never had before since the volcano began. I'm telling you, stone was painting like nobody's business. We were all the way down in Carkill, many miles away from the volcano. And the stones that were falling that night match up chair, match up chair glass, match up windscreen, and bore up house and all sorts of things like that. Stone fell just like in the days of, of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. The man of God spoke prophetically, and we did not even know it. Escape for your life. So God's word is never to take slightly. They said somebody was near to where the volcano was. And when the stones they were pelting up there, he had to cry out, God have mercy upon me. Because those stones that were falling from heaven, it was like they were so hot and so furious. He thought his life was going to pass that same night. But when you hear the Lord speak to us, we need to obey him. Everything we have on this world, in this world, they're only temporary. We could enjoy them for a little while, but don't set your affection upon them. Do not set your affection on things of the earth, but on things above. The psalmist David tells us clearly, if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Only here to last for a while, man, and after a while they just vanish just like that. Escape for your life. In verse 30, it says in the same Luke chapter 17, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day in which, verse 31, In that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff is in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Nothing in this world have any value when you hear Jesus returns. It's going to be a quick and a sudden judgment upon the earth. You see, I was telling somebody the other day that when we had some of the explosions on the island of Montreal, whatever we had in our homes, 
it was of no value to us. We just wanted to escape for our life. So we left a lot of valuable things in our homes. But we had no choice because our lives was more important than the possessions that we acquired. And this is what Jesus is trying to say here. In the last days, if you're on the house top and you remember that you have a lot of things in the house, then I turn up, don't even bother about them. If you're out in the field, don't even bother about what you have in your house because they would be of no value whatsoever then because it will be judgment time. The word of the Lord is telling us today that the things of this world don't really matter so much. Remember Lot's wife, how she got caught up in all sorts of things. And she lost her soul because of disobedience to God's word. We have seen how sinful pleasures and worldly possessions, etc. can distract people. We see it in the time of Noah. see it in the time of Lot. And in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. In like manner, Satan will use any method. Any method possible to distract any of us from, this obey, from obeying God's word. If we allow him to. He knows where our weak point is. And he's always targeting our weak point. Because he's coming to distract us from obeying God's word. And he's determined to keep nagging away at us until he gets us to be distracted. Don't let anyone and don't let anything distract you from obeying God's word. Let me just bring to you another story. We find that David was a man after God's own heart. A worshipper, a man of war, a man extremely gifted and skillful in playing music. And he was a great king in Israel. Yet he got himself distracted from obeying God's word. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1, it tells us that in, at the time when the kings go out to battle, David tarried at Jerusalem. It was time when kings normally go out to fight. It was not relaxing time. It wasn't off season. It was battle season for the kings. He's a king of, of, of Israel. He is the leader that God had then to lead. Well, he was supposed to be out there leading the troops. But sometimes carelessness distracts us. Sometimes laziness distracts us. Sometimes all sorts of things come in our way and distract us from doing what God wants us to do. If he's a leader and a true leader, he should lead from the front. And he decided he's not going anywhere this time. So he tarried still at Jerusalem. And many of God's people set up themselves to be distracted by the devil because we are we allow ourselves to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. When it's church time and you stay at home and you go shopping and you go to see friends and you get caught up with Facebook and Twitter and WhatsApp and talking on the phone and internet and everything, then you open up yourself for serious distraction. Everything has its place, but when it's God's time, it's God's time. I always admire some people when they say to me, Pastor, I honestly couldn't make it today because I was very, very sick. But I still took time out while I was at home. And I prayed, and I worshipped, and I read the Bible, and I kept my heart in tune while I was not at church. Because if we don't do that, we could allow the enemy to use that same time when you were supposed to be in God's house to get caught up with all sorts of things that distract us. Let me tell you something. Because of David's carelessness. You see, we're in a season of serious and aggressive spiritual attack right now. And God's people cannot afford to be careless. If God's people are not in his house, when we are to be, and we're not in God's presence, when we are to be, if, even if we're at home, 
and the Lord tells us, go to pray, go to pray. God tells you, go and read your Bible. Lock up for your locking up and go and read. It's a reason why he's speaking to you. If you choose to obey the voice of the Lord and do your own thing, you open up yourself to be distracted. David was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we find that's where it all went down the hill from there. Verse 2 tells us, and it came to pass in the evening time that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of his house and he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David was distracted from his calling as the king of Israel by the lust of the flesh. And his distraction was so strong that even though he heard, you see, if he, if he, if he, if he, if he, if he couldn't make it out to the, to, the, to the battle, the Bible don't say he had no excuse to say why he couldn't go to the battle, but sometimes we just kill us, we just don't want to do what we're supposed to do, and we open up ourselves to be distracted. And he stayed at home, he wasn't even in a prayerful attitude for those who were out there on the battlefield, losing their life. He should have been concerned, oh, Lord help those on the out there, please, because they need your help. We're up against an opposition, Lord. And Lord, remember those on the battlefield, I could not be there for this reason. But Lord, bring them through. Lord, move, it, move out among them. Move like only your alone can move, Lord. And bring them through it, victory. No, sir. Distraction spirit, lazy spirit, careless spirit was upon David. And he got up on top of his house roof. He would look out. And there was the temptation right before his eyes. Someone on the battlefield, but he's out there being distracted. And while he was distracted, he saw this woman bathing herself. He said, The woman is so beautiful to my eyes. He inquired of her. And the distraction was so strong that they brought back word to David and they said, David, this is Bathsheba, this Bathsheba the wife of Uriah. It's somebody else's wife. But the distraction was so strong that even though he heard it was a married woman, somebody else's wife, David sent messengers and took her. That's what verse 4 said. And she came in unto him and he lay with her. And she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. The lust of the flesh distracted the man of God so badly that he abused his power as king and sent for Bathsheba. And she came into him and he lay with her and she returned to her house. That is warning us today against being distracted by the lust of the flesh and worldliness and sinful pleasures and anything and anyone who will distract us because the consequences are great. And sometimes they're more than what we are bargaining for. David probably thought he could take a chance. Because he knew that the husband was out there on the battlefield. And he thought, well, by the time he returned back to, she returned back to her house now. And the man come home now. Everything will just cover up and everything will just go in secret. And nobody will even know what happened. But let me tell you something. Even if nobody sees what we do, God sees. And God knows. God will not let sin go unpunished. Numbers 32 verse 23 tells us, be sure your sin will find you out. And when David thought he got away with his actions, verse 5 told us about the hot water he found himself in. It says there, and the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Oh my Lord of mercy. He thought he got away with what he did. But now a whole can of worms. Open up in front of him. And he don't know where to start. He didn't bargain for all of this. But he find himself in hot water. When David heard what happened. It was the biggest nice nightmare. That could ever happen to him. When he heard that news. He still tried to cover it up. His actions. So he sent to Uriah in the battlefield. And Uriah came from the battlefield. And he went down to David. 
And David tell him, go down to your house and go and live with your wife, Bathsheba. And David tried best with him, you know, to talk him up good and so as the king. But you I would not go. <laughs> so after David heard that Uriah did not go down to sleep with his wife that night, David said, well, I have to try another trick. So he gave him some rum to drink, and he drunk on him, and he got himself drunk. Uriah was drunk like nobody business, back home he said, drunk like a coo. But no matter how drunk he was, he's not going home. <laughs> You see how much your child will cover up, saying it just can't cover. You just have to face up to it. After David saw what was happening, that not even the drunk in Uriah would go home, he put a letter in his hands. In verse 15, and he said, and to say this letter, put in Uriah's own hand, you know, his own death sentence. And the letter said, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. And retire from him that he may die. The man of God. When you hear you get distracted. The Lord is talking to us seriously about distraction today. Because when we get distracted we do a lot of rubbish. A lot of nonsense. All sorts of things out of character. Because we lose the plot completely. This man was not acting as no Christian again. He was acting like a demon. Because he was out of it completely. The distraction took him away from God's. Um, the, 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 the way how he used to be so much in God's presence and so much you know, humble before God he changed completely distraction messed him up sending the death sentence in the man's own hand he now thinking it's good letter he carrying back not realizing it was his death sentence took back the thing and when he read when, when, when the man in charge of the battle read this letter from the king to let Uriah be in the hardest battle, forefront, and retreat from him so that he can die. What a terrible setup that was. Verse well, 17 tells us that Uriah died in the battle just as David wanted it. And verse 26 when, Uriah, when the wife of Uriah heard her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And verse 27 tells us that when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. The Lord don't laugh with stupidness. He drifted far, far, far from God. This was not the David that God really called the way how he was. When he fought against Goliath and so on. He was so much on fire for God. He was so charged up. He was so anointed. He was so spiritual. How could he find himself in such a condition? Just by being distracted. He just went further and further away from God. No matter who we are. God is talking to all of us today. If we allow anything or anyone to distract us from obeying and following God's command. We will go further and end up further than where we intended to go. David was distracted by the lust of the flesh. And he went further and further away from God. He set up the murder of Uriah. And he sent and fetched Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, and made her his own wife. This thing that he did displeased the Lord. A man of God, a man of great passion for worship, a man who so established in the things of God could end up in such a shame and disgrace. That's what distraction will do to any one of us if we don't stay focused on obeying and applying the word of God to our lives. And we find that it was so bad that in 2 Samuel chapter 2 that when Nathan told David the story about this man who had the one sheep and this other man had so much of sheep and this man with the plenty sheep take the one sheep from that man and dress it and make it ready for a stranger that passed by and kept all he had. David said, no, 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 no. no. 
No, no, no. Verse, 50, verse 5 tells us that David's anger was greatly kindled against that man. In that story, he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. Tell me who he is right away. I'm ready for him. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Which one it is? In this kingdom here? If there's such a man has done such a thing, point him out to me because I'm going to take him out straight away. Straight away, he got to die. David said, man, nobody could do such wickedness. Not his place here. Not in my, under my kingship. Verse 6 says, And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did the, this thing, and because he had no pity. Whoever done this thing, I have no pity. Whoever done this thing is a wicked man. Whoever done this, man, this thing, he's had me, he has me. He, whoever done this thing, he has me very angry. Point him out to me because I want to take him out. He must die today. He's got to die today. He can't live under my kingship. I want him right away. Point him out to me. Can you please tell me who it is, Nathan? I want to find him. If I can find him, he's going down. Well, David's surprise. To David's surprise. You see, when you hear you're distracted, and you're spiritually blind. You don't even know what you're doing your own self. He don't even realize that he himself was doing all these things. And he was so far from God and so distracted. That, they, that Nathan had to open his eyes and tell him in verse 7. David, thou art the man. Don't look for nobody else. If you want somebody to kill tell you the person who it is. Are you? Thou art the man. So if you want to go fire a shot, if you're not living in a glass, the glass oh, don't find a stone because you're going to go down. <laughs> he was the exact man. And when he heard that, I'm sure he was shaking. And the man of God said to him, where who hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil in his sight. Thou hast killed the Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And you have taken his wife to be thy wife. And hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. And God used Nathan to open David's eyes spiritually. And his eyes was open to what he has done and the consequences for his action. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord hath put away thy sin, and thou shalt not die. And Psalms 51 tells us how he cried out to the Lord for mercy. And he cried out for forgiveness, and he repented. And the Lord forgave David and restored him again because he sincerely repented. Before the Lord. Hallelujah. God is telling us today. Don't let anything. Don't let anyone. Distract us. From obeying his word. Because the consequences. Are great. The consequences. Are enormous. Don't play with sin. Don't play with Satan. Don't play with anything. That is dangling before you. To try to drift you away from God. Because anytime you run after anything else or anybody else and leave of God you're in trouble I tell you a real life story when I was in school I saw a girl in the Pentecostal church there on fire for God speaking in tongues oh my God she was on fire she was on fire she was on fire she was on fire and we were excited to see how God is taking her places in the spirit realm and brother, brothers and sisters, I don't know all the facts. But she got involved with an unsaved young man. And brother, with all that steam and all that fire and all that anointing that she, was, she had in her life. For some reason, she got distracted. She got into that relationship. I don't know how long it lasts. But it's as if she sold out her salvation. 
to this very day, as far as I know, that person have not found themselves back in the house of God again with all that potential that they had. Everything was dead and everywhere that God wanted to take her, she missed out. I don't know if she's married. I don't know if she got anything out of sin. But as far as I know, everything that God has in store for her, she lost it. Simply because she was distracted. Whatever Lord is telling us today, don't let anything. Don't let nothing distract. It doesn't matter who we are. No matter how we are. You might say, I'm so spiritual. I'm so in the world. I'm so, I can't, if you happen to David, it can happen to any one of us. Don't let anything distract us. From the word of the Lord. From obeying what God commands of our life. Today, the Lord is telling us don't let anything distract us because it's serious. It is important. As soon as Peter was distracted by the things of this world, by the winds and the waves, and everything going on around him, he sang. Any one of us got, get distracted, we are going down. We have to keep our eyes upon the Lord. We have to stay steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Things are happening all around us to distract us. It could be circumstances of life, it could be pleasures of sin, it could be material things, it could be all sorts of things. The enemy is not using the same thing, and every one of us is using different. He knows what is best to attract every one of us, and he's using all sorts of methods. Whatever it is today, don't let anything, don't let nothing distract you from obeying God's word. Whatever God said in his word, stick with it, focus on it, remain faithful to it. Because once you come off track, sometimes to get back on track is not easy. And even there we get back on track, you think it's two things he rent you? You think it's two things? Read it for yourself. Are those chapters after he messed up with Badly? What happened to him? He got, well, he got some things that took place in his life. It was the darkest part in his life. He paid for his actions severely. It's not worth the while. Being distracted. And going down that slippery slope. Because the consequences that you will pay. There will be too much. For you to handle. You would not find it easy at all. Remember that's why. That's what Jesus tells us to do. It's because she knows that sometimes when we get distracted, sometimes we don't even get back on track at all. Completely judgment strikes. And eternally we are lost. So stay in focus and watch God move in your life. If you're not safe, today is the day. So black out every distraction. Too many things in the world seem to have you caught up. Too many things in the world seem to have you off track. But leave them aside today. Put them one side and tell yourself, I have to find myself in God's kingdom this year. I have to serve God because all these distractions, they're not going to do me no good. Put aside the distractions. If you're not saved. Come to Jesus. Obey his word. You hear his voice, hard not your heart. Come quickly before. It's too late. You never know when it's going to be your last. If the people of Noah's they knew that the rain was going to fall on that particular day, everybody would have run in. But they did not know. We do not know when Christ should return. But when he does return, it will be too late. If you're not in the act of safety, we got to come in now. Why do we have a chance? You may be safe. But you want to ask the Lord to keep me focused on you, Jesus. Distractions are coming on every angle. Distractions are coming on all sorts of directions. Jesus! You see what the enemy is trying to do with me? But help me not to be distracted. For I'm serving you how I are to serve you. I want to be completely yielded to your will and to your way. You are distracted by so many things. So many people. The enemy is using them. In all sorts of ways to try to distract you from serving God. How are you supposed to serve God? But you want to ask the Lord to keep my eyes centered upon your Lord. Keep my eyes centered upon you, Lord. You see the distractions lurking all around me. And let me tell you something without even sugarcoating it. He's not picking out the enemy, not picking out. He's coming at all of us. He's coming at all of us in one way or the other to try to distract us. Because he knows God has great things in store for us. But he don't want us to get there. He's not picking out. 
want the Lord to help us to stay focused. Steadfast and unmovable. Yes. I was upon the work of the Lord as much as we know. Our labor is not in vain. 